If you're buying a MacBook or a Mac Mini in 2023, please do not get 256 gig of storage. In this video, I'm going to tell you why. Let's go. The year was 2020 and little did I know it, but I was about to buy my first Mac because Apple had just launched the brand new Apple M1, now the M2, which was their system on a chip. Now this was a game changer because it gave you amazing performance in an Apple Mac computer without the price tag that Apple are kind of famous for. In fact, right now you can pick up a Mac Mini M2, the updated model with 256 gig of storage and eight gig of RAM for just 599 US which is $100 cheaper than what I paid in 2020. So why after using my M1 Mac Mini for over two years am I recommending that if you are buying one that you go for 512 or even one terabyte of storage? Well, that's what we're going to dive into now. So here's the model I bought back in 2020. And the reason that I got the absolute base model was it was my first Mac. I just wanted to test the waters. I didn't think that this is what would convert me from PC to Mac. Uh, spoiler alert, it did. But at the time, I just wanted to get my foot in the door and I thought, well, I don't really need more than 256 gigabytes of storage because I can use external storage, right? And if anything, I was worried more about the eight gigabytes of RAM than I was about the storage. However, after using it for two years, I've completely changed my tune because the one thing that I haven't run into problems with my Mac mini is memory. I use Logic Pro, I use GarageBand, I use iMovie, I use a lot of apps, Chrome browser tabs out the wazoo, and have never hit a memory wall. So going to 16 or 24 gig or even more in some of the higher models seems like a good idea. And historically, that's what I've recommended because in the past, it's been much easier to add external storage than to add external memory. In fact, that's exactly what I did because the folks at Sabrent were kind enough to supply me with this, a one terabyte S. SSD and I plugged this into my Mac Mini and thought, problem solved, but problem not really solved. And here's a couple of reasons why. Applications like GarageBand and iMovie and Pages and even just the standard Apple apps use up an awful lot of space, let alone if you're like me and you're an Office 365 user, you're installing Word, PowerPoint, Excel. I found that I was using the 256 gig of storage really, really quickly. Now, that's not a big problem because you can store your data on an external drive right? Right? Well, sort of. There's a couple of problems with that. One is iCloud Drive. Now, if you've used iCloud Drive with your Apple products, it's really difficult to manage. Even though it stores it in the cloud, it's constantly wanting to download stuff to your local storage. And while it's technically possible to store that on an external drive, it's kind of clunky and hard to set up. So I wanted the ability to have everything just there at my fingertips. So a little extra storage would have been super handy. With GarageBand, I thought, well, hey, I can put all of my project files on external storage. I can even install the library of samples and instruments to an external device. And again, you can, but it makes it a clunky experience. What if your drive just disconnects for some reason, or you need to unplug it to transfer files? It's just so much easier to have that little extra internal storage, especially for things you're using within your project. Nothing worse than getting that error where it says, no, we can't find that sound, Pete. And what about if you want to take that step up to Logic Pro or Final Cut Pro? Well, you're going to hit that storage wall even quicker. Yet, the 8 gigabytes that I have on this for the RAM is still doing fine. Even with a Logic Project with a bunch of plugins, it is going super smooth. And you can still get great deals on the original 2020 Mac M1. I'm still rocking it. And apart from my challenges with storage, it is still going great. So there's links down in the description that'll take you here to Amazon. Those are affiliate links, which means that I will be paid a commission if you make a purchase from there, I would go at least this one of the 512 gigabytes of storage for all the reasons that I've just talked about here today. And to check out these and all of my recommendations for gear for your home or mobile studio, just jump on over to studiolivetoday.com slash gear. So what's my recommendation? If you're a creator, you're on a budget and you want the best Mac that's going to last you at least a few years of creating, well, it's to increase the amount of storage. And I know it's the exact opposite of what I've recommended in the past, but I would actually leave your memory at eight gigabytes. Sure, if you've got an extra 200 bucks, add the 16 gigabytes, but I would actually increase your storage to 512 as a minimum, or at least one terabyte if you got the budget to go up to that. You're gonna be spending a few extra hundred dollars up front, but trust me, you're gonna save yourself a heap of frustration.